It's a beautiful fall right now and our friends at Manscaped want to make sure it's beautiful when your pants fall. Don't let the trees be the only thing dropping their excess leaves and give your trunk the look it deserves with the leaders in male grooming and their fourth generation performance package. Boys, get your baby makers ready for a cuffing season like no other and join the 4 million men worldwide using Manscaped. Make sure you go to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping using the code TRUEFOOTY20. Enjoy the podcast. Um, cool. All right, let's talk about football. Um, yeah, so we did a pod uh, a month ago or so, maybe? Uh, six rounds ago. Six, it was post oh, round wow. 12, yeah. God, I'm slacker than I thought. Um, and we just talked about our perceptions of like the rankings of where everyone was at because uh, we hadn't done one for a while yeah. before that. Uh, and it's fair to say a lot of it was all right, but uh, some of it's been messed around by the Ooh, yeah. subsequent form, particularly with teams like St Kilda um, who have... Yeah, throwing their not throwing their season away, but you know, I think they've won one of their last six. Yeah, a few teams have gone up, a few teams have gone down. Mm, exactly. So um, we won't rehash the exact same pod, but we'll talk a little bit about where things sit. Bush, um, we'll start at the top, eh? Yeah. Like uh, at the moment, it seems like Geelong are the form team of the comp. In fact, they're ranked first on the ladder, and they've got the easy run home. Apparently, yeah, right. Interesting. Yeah, uh, except for their big clash against West Coast in round twenty three at GMHBA. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, I think the Ge- Ge- reason Geelong are consistently high on the ladder, other than winning games, is their percentage is always really strong. They, uh, they are really good at putting teams to the sword, um, which is really the difference, I think, um, as we're seeing on the ladder. you know, I can't remember what it looks like right now, but not long ago, the second and sixth were like separated by percentage. Or, yeah. or I think that might have been the live yeah. ladder I was looking at. But either way, obviously, the difference between top two and, and potentially falling all the way to sixth is... A, the ability to get over the line, like they've done, uh, but also to put teams away, and that's something Geelong's been really good at over a number of years. I think last year or the year before, I mean, their percentages have always been around that 130 mark, which uh, I think is kind of like the premiership standard. So uh, what do you make of the Cats, and how do you think they compare against the Demons as the best side of the comp? Well, you, a few weeks about, yeah, the last podcast we would have clearly had Melbourne, even though they were starting to hit these troubles that we've seen. Like, But you would have figured back then that they would have, had it more figured out by now than they do. Mm. They've still got some of those vulnerabilities they're going to need to work through to get back to being the Melbourne that kills everyone. Mm. But Geelong's just sort of been that team that's, for years, they've just built off having that consistent platform that they can assault each year with and sort of give themselves an opportunity to have a crack. It actually astounds me how consistent they are. It's ridiculous. For a side that's quite, you know, an ageing list um, and have been criticised for not bring in youth the, the fact that they sit first on the ladder in 2022 uh, is a huge like um what's the word testament to yeah. to the way they've managed to go about it like i think as a club as a team sorry as a fan that supports a team that i think has been looking at the same model like holding on to some older players not investing in youth and i think trying to adapt a geelong model we have obviously by comparison been way more up and down whereas geelong are just consistently there and it's it's incredible uh, I, think, I think I think a lot of credit needs to go to uh, Chris Scott, who's probably a little underrated as a coach. He's a weird one because on the one hand, you sort of there is scope to shit on him a bit, but then at the same time, there's like he's done so well for so long, like to yeah. give them the opportunity every year, even if he's not necessarily capitalised on it, except those early years, po- real post Bomber Thompson. I think if you're just looking at a side that's consistently good, <clears throat> excuse me, even if they haven't necessarily been the number one team for a long period of, of a given season. The fact that they're just in the mix and don't falter up and down and, and you know get these strong percentages, I think that's a huge reflection on the coach. Uh, Do you know what I mean? I, th- I think in terms of stability and, and consistency, the, uh, the coach needs to be respected for that. Now, I actually uh, think people run with the narrative of Geelong overrated. I think they're closer to being underrated because I think people are sick of Geelong and mm. want to see them drop. And um, I, I'm generalising here, but I think... I think they need a lot of credit for where they sit right now. What about the D's? How do you what do you make of them right now as a team that I think we all kind of considered the best team this year and have been on top of the ladder for most of the year and obviously faltering a bit? What where do you think the D's are at? I think they still can figure it all out, get back to their best footy and put everyone in pretty nefarious position and likely mm. win the flag, but they need to figure a few things out. There seems to be some like I don't know. They had the shit with May earlier in the year, mm. the restaurant incident. Like, yep. Maybe there's more behind the scenes. They're doing well hiding talks yeah. of some guys possibly leaving at the end of the year. We'll yeah. get into that later. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, to post a snapshot of where they're at at the moment, so they're second on the ladder. 
So um, my good friend Caden McDonald uh, posted this in the group chat and he's, it's a comparison of where Melbourne were at round 18 last year and where they're at this year. 13 wins yep. both both times. Uh, three losses last year in a draw and their four losses this year. Their points for was 86 both, uh, sorry, this year and 85 last year and the points against were 66 last year and 65. So as a statistical profile, it's almost exactly the same and we're having the same concerns. Melbourne started the, sa- the year really well. Um, you could argue they probably looked a bit more red hot last year than they did this year and then have faltered mid-season. Last year, it was against some bottom teams. This year, it's against some, some better quality sides. Um, but generally speaking, it's a very similar trajectory. And then we had the same question marks over whether or not their forward line would work. Um, obviously, got an elite midfield and their mid-forward connection was off. So I guess what I'm saying is we did this like song and dance last year and they came out and won the grand final by 74 <laughs> points. So my view is that Melbourne are going to be fine. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair to suggest. Obviously, just because they did it last year doesn't mean they couldn't fall in a heat this year. But I am pretty reluctant to jump on the, ooh, is there yeah. trouble at Melbourne bandwagon right now? And I think... Balance of probabilities, they're still Melbourne. Yeah. So that's they're, they're still my pick for the flag, to yeah. be honest. But it is not clear. Mm. You know, there's a, there's a few contenders there. I'd say, you know, three to four. Yeah, it's pretty uh, bunched. Who, who do you think, actually, while we're on this, could win the flag this year? Well, I've because I've sort of done my tiers like I have for every party throughout the year. I've got yeah. my top tier, which is Brizzy, Melbourne, Geelong, and Freo. But yeah. Freo sort of probably teetering a little for me mm-hmm. at the moment. I'd almost put them in the top four tier rather than the top tier. Interesting. It's borderline, but I just nudged them ahead mm-hmm. of the teams just below. Yep. So, but in Those terms four. of teams, you could picture winning the flag. How many do you reckon there are? Those four are the realistic ones, but. In saying that, last podcast I said Collingwood could possibly do it mm. from 7th. Mm. They're probably going to be higher on the ladder than 7th based on how they've gone since that podcast. Yeah. Credit to me. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's an even race though. So, uh, like, they could jump from 3rd to 7th in a week uh, uh, in, the, in the way the ladder is currently structured. So, yeah, to, to answer that as well, I, I think Melbourne, obviously, you can see winning the flag. Geelong, yes, it is hard to picture because they often get so close and, and then mm. and falter. But of, of course they can win the flag, um, having beaten Melbourne recently. Brisbane, um, consistently good side. Like, mm. I don't think we even talked about them much on the yeah. last pod because we there's no yeah. real narrative there. Like they they had the bit yeah. of adversity with the you know the health and safety protocols and lost the home game against uh, in four Essendon, and then bounced back and beat GWS by forty points. So around the mark again, but again not good at the MCG. My I've got a bit of a point narrative I could make about Brisbane actually. But I was sort of thinking talking about Geelong early. That's sort of like how we talked about the Chris Scott era, I think mm. they've sort of at the beginning of their Chris Scott era with the Chris Fagan era, we'll say. Oh. But like that sort of era where there's like a group that's sort of, like it's the point I make about them every time they come up. They're trying to set up to have sustained cracks at being in the finals every year and mm. went getting using that opportunity to win a flag. But I'd say Brisbane is on a very similar trajectory to like that Geelong of 10 years ago, I think. Take me back ten years ago, twenty twelve. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Okay. So, whereas Chris Scott sort of come yeah. in, uh, yeah, and they've okay. sort of got a group that's sort of a few older guys, but sort of a group that can build and sustain for a decade. Mm. I think that's what Brisbane has, mm. and they've already had a few picks at the cherry, and they should eventually pip one off, maybe. Yeah, I include Fremantle as a team that can win the flag. Uh, I think their ability to beat the top teams has been strong. So, like, uh, we said the same thing about Melbourne last year. I don't think Fremantle was on Melbourne's level uh, last year. But their ability to beat Geelong in Melbourne and or Geelong and then beat Melbourne in Melbourne shows that they can match it with the best on a given day. So when finals come around, that's a huge boost to them. So The to given con- day is the question, though, I think. Yeah, 100%, 100%. They still have the occasional inconsistent vintage Fremantle performance, like the yeah. Sydney game just... They couldn't make a right decision if their life depended on it. Yeah, very true. And, and it's a young side and not many players on that list would have played finals, I'd imagine, at Fremantle. No. So that, that is the question mark on them. Having said that, if we're just comparing the, the top quality of football, I think Fremantle's is in that conversation, to be honest. Yeah, when we're playing our best footy, we're as good as anyone. Yeah. And I'm going to go a little bit stronger on you mm. than you on the um, Collingwood point. I think they can win the flag, personally. Yeah. So they currently sit fifth. Um, obviously, they're coming from a longer way back and they're in a dream run at the moment, which means, you know, on the balance of probabilities, they're going to falter again. Then they've, they've lost some winnable games this year. Not, lost to, uh, sorry, nearly lost to North. And I actually thought that was a huge sign of resilience of that side to not drop that game, to come back from five goals down 
uh, was it three quarter time and 20 points or something like that. Um, that's a huge sign of a, of a side that is mature yep. because North Melbourne were very good that day and then they yeah. backed it up the following week and beat Richmond. Because the thing is with the Pies, they've, we've known it all year, even when at the start of the year we figured, yeah, they're in for a down year. Mm. They, we knew they still had that top-end talent that could fuel such uh, potential in their team. Yeah. But then the young guys have really f- plugged and played around those key guys mm. and then even Nick Dacos has become one of those key guys in his yeah. first year of football. Yeah, it's it's the amazing. The youngest player ever with 40 touches and three goals. We criticised their, um, you know, at the end of 2020, the way things were going, and then that looked justified at the oh, yeah, I roasted them from there. Yeah, yeah, 100%. But it's, it's, their plan has worked perfectly. Mm. They, they've got a really... They've drafted well, and then, obviously, some of their players still in their mm. prime, um, your, your Maynards, Crisps, <laughs> and then some evergreen guys like Howe and Pendlebury. Like, there's yeah. still a lot of balanced quality there between young and old as well. And even, it seems they have a willingness to let some of that top-end talent go out the door, which we'll touch mm. in on the trade element, I guess. But, mm. yeah, Dugowie and Grundy, two yep. guys that might not be there next year. That's true, yeah. And we would have thought that was devastating a couple of years ago. And I remember when they let Trelaw go for nothing, it was so they could re-sign those two. Those two. <laughs> yeah. It's an interesting little aside, but yeah, because they were prioritising repaying those two. Yeah, but it goes to show, I guess, that you get a good coach in there, which Craig McRae appears to yep. be, um, and you t- you draft well, like you can overcome perceived mistakes yep. like that. So I've got five teams that I think can win the flag. I think Richmond are be- below that group, Sydney mm. below that group, personally. Uh, but ask me again when I get back from Europe, <laughs> and I might have a different opinion. Depends, <laughs> on much, depends how much footy I get to watch. There. And how much sangria you've had? Yeah, <laughs> sangria. I don't think I've never had a sangria in my life. <laughs> oh, oh the one night I got on it, it was a rough one. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. 